Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Friday, March 17th, 2023. The second day of the first round of the NCAA tournament. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my $15 Bank Shop best bet, you can find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Friday and college hoops. First up, let's head to the West region, the late night game on the board for Friday. It's going to be the 11 seed Arizona State Sun Devils taking on the 6 seed TCU Horned Frogs. This one's going to be 10.05 Eastern on True TV, and TCU is currently a six point favorite. Total is at 141. Now, I mentioned when, I, when we went over that game for Arizona State and Nevada in the playing game, I like the Sun Devils in that one. They got the job done for us, winning by 25 points in the end. But I also mentioned that I didn't really like either team's chances, Nevada or Arizona State's, against TCU. I think TCU is the best six seed this year in the tournament. I think they were deserving of a five seed or better. And, you know, you look at TCU, sure, they went through that four-game losing streak at one point in Big 12 play, but that was a four-game losing streak without their best player, arguably, in Mike Miles, who went down with an injury. But TCU going into the NCAA tournament, a pretty healthy team. They got most of their starters ready to go. And I, I think TCU is going to win this game in the end. A team that takes care of the basketball, forces a lot of turnovers, strong on the offensive glass. Shot quality-wise, there are not many better teams this season than TCU on really both ends of the court. So I like TCU in this matchup, and I know it's really tough betting against these play-in teams that won their first round, especially in a blowout win like Arizona State did. I mean, they looked really impressive in that one. But you got to remember, you got to remember, you know, Nevada is a Mountain West team. We've seen the Mountain West really struggle in these NIT and NCAA tournament games. We saw it last year in the first round when, when they went 0-4. We saw New Mexico get blown out in the uh, NIT, of, you know, uh, against Utah Valley. So uh, I'm going to take TCU. I think they're the better team. I think the price is just right for us. So I'm going to lay the points here with the Horned Frogs. Next up, let's go back to the West region as we see the 12-5 matchup in this region between VCU and St. Mary's. This one's going to be 2 o'clock Eastern on TBS. St. Mary's is a four-point favorite. Total is at 122.5 currently. Now, I see a lot of people on this 12-5 upset with VCU, and I just can't get there. I think St. Mary's, although you know disappointing to see them lose to Gonzaga in the last two matchups that they had down the stretch in the regular season and in the conference tournament, and losing that second game but in a blowout, 77-51, to I still think St. Mary's overall this season has been one of the better mid-major teams. You know, this is a team that takes care of the basketball, a great rebounding team. They're second in the nation in defensive rebounding percentage. Really important in a game like this where, you know, a VCU team, not the best shooting team. Uh, they've definitely had better numbers this year shooting the basketball than last year, but you certainly don't want to give a team like VCU second chance opportunities. St. Mary's has just been really good at limiting those all year long. And overall, St. Mary's, one of the best defenses in the country, ninth in the nation in adjusted defensive efficiency. Uh, like I said, they can force those turnovers. VCU is a team and a defense that really volatile. They like to force a lot of mistakes, force a lot of turnovers. They're sixth in the nation in turnover percentage defensively. So they're going to benefit from playing teams like Dayton who have issues taking care of the basketball. But when you're playing a team like St. Mary's, that's 60th in turnover percentage offensively. Uh, you know, a good rebounding team, a good shooting team, good three-point shooting team. I just don't think that your defense is going to have that much success. So I think this is honestly a bad draw for VCU. I think St. Mary's, and although they definitely would have liked to see a different team, I don't think St. Mary's is happy playing VCU themselves. I still think St. Mary's is the better team in this one, and we're laying a really solid price here, only four points. I think St. Mary's wins this one by seven plus. So give me the Gales. I'm going to lay the points. Next up, let's go to the East region, as this is the 14-3 matchup between Montana State and Kansas State. This one, 940 Eastern on CBS. Kansas State is an 8.5-point favorite. Total is at 139. Now, Montana State, for me, checks a lot of the boxes that I look for with these first-round underdogs in the NCAA tournament. First of all, this is a team that has experience. Overall, D1 experience ranked 46th in the nation, but they also have they also have tournament experience. And yes, you know, last year they got blown out in the first round to Texas Tech, but hey, they made the first round of the NCAA tournament. They won the Big Sky last year, so they have experience playing in these neutral site NCAA tournament uh, games. This is a well-coached team, a team that plays fundamentally well. They get to the free throw line a ton, and they're a very good free throw shooting team. 32nd in the nation free throw percentage as a team. A good shooting team, especially from two-point range. And like I said, the defense, you know, this is a really strong defense. Great rebounding team. They force turnovers. And Kansas State, you know, I, I don't really like betting on teams, especially when they're laying big numbers like this. 
when they struggle in the, you know at the end of the regular season and into the conference tournament they lose their first game of the conference tournament by 13 points to TCU at the neutral site a little bit concerning for me I could see Kansas State winning this game but I would not want to be laying this many points I think uh, Montana State at least covers the number but I think this could be a potential big time upset on Friday night so give me the points here with the Montana State Bobcats Next up, let's go to the East Region. We'll go back to the East Region as Purdue takes on Fairleigh Dickinson. This one's going to be 650 Eastern on TNT. Purdue 23-point favorites. Total is at 145. Now, for me, you know, this is kind of a funny matchup because when you look at Purdue, you got seven foot four Zach Eady, arguably the best player in college basketball this year. He can do it all on both ends of the court. Great rebounder. He's actually really improved his shot as well. A free throw percentage of around 74%. Not too bad for a guy who's seven foot four. And Purdue, you know, they rely on him, but they also have a solid backcourt that's improving, I think. Uh, you know, down the stretch of the season, we've seen Purdue struggle in terms of breaking the press. We saw it against Penn State, where Purdue had a big lead. Penn State put the press on. Purdue was really struggling, but you know, this is a matchup for Fairleigh Dickinson where you're a team, you know, you took down Texas Southern and you beat them by double digits. Really, you, know, you got to give credit to Fairleigh Dickinson, but the tallest player on this Fairleigh Dickinson team is 6'6". Uh, you got Zach Eady at 7'4". I just really worry about your matchup there in the front court. You know, Texas Southern, although they lost that game by 23 points, it wasn't because of their front court play. You know, John Walker, one of their best forwards on the team at 22 points, he was 9 to 15 from two point range. The real big reason why Texas Southern lost by 23 was they went 1 of 17 from the perimeter. Uh, that's about 6% from three. Fairleigh Dickinson was 11 of 27 from three, 41% around. So when you have that much of an advantage from the perimeter, you're going to win games by 20 plus points. But when you're playing Purdue, I don't think you're going to have that advantage. You know, Purdue has a really good uh, perimeter defense, top 50 in the country in three point defense. They're already a great rebounding team. They get to the free throw line, they don't take a lot of fouls. They have a great two point offense, and that's all because of Zach Eady. And I just don't know where Fairleigh Dickinson is going to be able to guard Zach Eady if they double team him. I think Purdue has plenty of shot makers on the perimeter that can take advantage of that. So, you know, Fairleigh Dickinson's going to be scrappy in this game, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I think Purdue wins this game going away. So give me the Boilermakers. I think this matchup just benefits them too much. And finally, in the East region, Memphis takes on FAU in the 8-9 matchup. This one's going to be 9-20 Eastern on TNT. Memphis, a two-point favorite currently. Total is at 153. I expect a very close game, a very high-scoring game, exciting game. One of the better games on the board, in my opinion, for Friday's card. And, you know, FAU is a team that... I think believes it should be seated higher in the tournament. I mean, this was a team that went 31 and three this season. They went 28 and three in, in the regular season, 18 and two in conference play, and then they sweep the conference tournament. They win the championship game over a really good UAB team, top 60 in Kempom this year. They beat them by 22 points in that championship game. Uh, you know, FAU was a team we faded honestly quite a few times in the regular season, especially in conference play, because they were overvalued. I mean, they were uh, big double-digit favorites against some of the teams that were you know, pretty solid in the Conference USA this season. We saw at one point uh, FAU was really struggling against the spread. They lost outright to UAB. They couldn't cover against Western Kentucky, couldn't cover against Rice, failed to cover against Louisiana Tech, lost outright against Middle Tennessee. That was one stretch of play in Conference USA action. But then we started to get better numbers with FAU, and we started backing them again. I mean, this is a solid team. And I think now at this price, a plus two as the underdog, I think it, you know the price doesn't get better than this with the Owls. This is a great fundamental team. The Mem at Memphis, I really worry about the fact that they're ranked 322nd in the nation in defensive rebounding percentage. FAU is a good shooting team to begin with. They're 30th in three-point shooting, 33rd in two-point field goal percentage shooting. If you're giving this team second-chance looks, they're just really going to score you know, at will in this game. And FAU already does a great job at taking care of the basketball. They get a lot of defensive rebounds, so Memphis shouldn't get a lot of second-chance looks. I think FAU is the better team fundamentally. I think shot quality-wise, these teams are pretty similar, but I, you know, one could argue to give the edge to FAU in the end. You know, Memphis played a tougher schedule in the AAC, and they have that nice win over Houston in that conference championship game. But I think that the price is right here for FAU, a team that continues to win and prove people wrong. I'm going to take the points here with the FAU Owls in this one. And that's it. Those are the games for Friday in the NCAA tournament. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.